Okay, so the story I'm going to read to you is Pinduli, and the author, the person who wrote the story, is Janelle Cannon, and she is the same person who wrote Stella Luna. I know some of you have read that story before, um, and some of you may have read this one, but it's one of my favorites. I think it has a great message, so here we go. The sun was low in the East African sky. The animals had been sleeping all through the hot afternoon. I'll try that again. The animals had been sleeping all through the hot afternoon and now they began to stir. Pinduli awoke before Mama Hyena, eager to explore. Don't go far, Mama Yawn. We must hunt soon. There has been so little to eat lately that we'll need all night to find enough to fill our bellies. Pinduli promised to stay close and trotted away. If you think about the word trotted, she trotted away. So that tells me that she's leaving. So it's a way that she's moving. And horses, they are one of my most favorite animals. And I know that a horse trots. And I have seen a horse show. And I know that the trot was between the walk and the canter, which is kind of like a slow jog. So a trot would be moving like at a quick quick pace, taking quick steps. So that's how I figured out what trot it means. As Pinduli passed the water hole, she spied sleepy animals in the brush. She sniffed the air, which was rich with exquisite and mysterious smells. Mm, think of that word, exquisite. If she's looking for food, she's hungry. It said it was rich with exquisite and mysterious smells. Exquisite would probably mean good or wonderful, um, excellent. But something was not so exquisite or mysterious. It was the smell of a dog. Pinduli's sharp ears picked up the soft pounding of pads on the dirt. She spotted a pack of wild dogs at play on a faraway ridge. And then they saw her. The leader dashed toward Penduli. The others trailed behind and yelped, Watch out, dog! It's a hyena! Just a shrimpy one, dog scoffed, coming closer. If it didn't have all that stripy fur, those ears would make me think it was a baby elephant. The pack erupted into wheezing laughter and galloped away, tongues lolling. Ooh, another good word, galloped. And it says galloped away. So that right there tells me that they're moving again. It's a way that they're moving. And galloped is actually like a word for something done clumsily. Um, so picture them kind of like sloppy walking away. I hope you liked my impression there. Penduli had never given a thought to her ears. Were they really so big? She let them fall flat against her head, flip, Plop. I can hardly hear now, Penduli thought, but she kept her ears down. Ahem! A rumbling voice came from the scrub. Ahem! Penduli whirled around. A lion! The little hyena poofed her mane and suddenly looked twice her size. Think about why she might have done that. She sees a lion. Look at the picture. And it says she poofed her mane and suddenly looked twice her size. Why might an animal do that? And I'm thinking back to when um, I had my dog on a walk and he saw another big dog come towards him and the back of his fur, like on his neck area, all stood up, right? Kind of like what Penduli is doing here. And I know he was doing it as a defense mechanism. And so that tells me that that's probably why Penduli is doing this. She might feel scared or threatened by this lion. And so when an animal poofs up their fur like that, they're trying to look bigger, which then would maybe make the other animal go away. Let's see if that happens in Penduli's case. She was sure that she was mighty fierce, but lion just calmly looked her up and down. Then he leaned his old scarred face nearer and said, that prickly fringe hardly becomes you, young lady. Pinduli's mane flopped as she hurried away. She had never given a thought to her coat. Was it really so straggly? 
Pinduli circled back to the water hole, waded into the pool, and let the water soak into her fur. She figured that when the water ran off, her coat would lie flat. No more prickly fringe. Zebra and two friends strolled over, their brown eyes glinting at the sight of the soggy little hyena. Pinduli didn't like their amused look. She tried to lower herself deeper into the water and disappear, but she was too late. Think about why she might be hiding. She's already been criticized by, um, let's think back, who was she criticized by the first time? The dogs for her ears. And then she was just criticized by Lion for her mane. So she's probably thinking that the zebras are gonna have something to say. If you're going to do stripes, please, please, please work on your symmetry and clarity. Good grooming, not soaking, will take some of that unpleasant haziness out of your patterns, whinnied Zebra. Then the three tossed their heads, dipped their lips into the water, and drank. And real quick, I want to talk about that word symmetry. Think about if you know what that might mean. I'll give you just a minute. It has something to do with shapes or objects. Often if a shape or an object has symmetry and you fold it in half, the two halves will line up. So basically, um, symmetry is when an object has, it can be like the exact same on one side. So if you were to put a line right down the middle, it would look exactly the same on each side. So I just happened to draw some examples for you and non-examples. So first we have the two squares here. Don't judge my artistic ability. Um, but if you look here, we have this square and then we have this one. And I've drawn a line of symmetry down one of them. So think about if you folded those on the line, right on the line where I drew, which one would kind of line up exactly or which one has both sides looking exactly the same. Hopefully you picked the blue one because that, if you look here, they're about equal size on each side. This one has a larger side here and a smaller side here. Okay, and then I did it again with triangles. So think about, look at the triangles, which triangle shows the same on each side, okay? We have a bigger side here and a smaller side here. So that would mean that this one shows the line of symmetry. So the zebra is making fun of Pinduli if she's saying that her, her stripes are not symmetrical. So it means they're probably kind of like scraggled all over. There's not really a pattern to them. Pinduli splashed past the startled zebras and escaped to a quiet spot. Were her stripes really so disorderly? Didn't Mama Hyena always say she was the most beautiful hyena ever? She rolled and rolled in the pale dust, which stuck to her wet fur. Soon, her soft stripes had completely vanished. Ears pinned, coat flattened and dusted to a pallid gray. Pinduli wanted nothing more than to get home, hoping no one would notice her. I'm really in trouble now, she worried. I've been gone a long time, and Mama gets awful cranky when she's hungry. So do I. I get really cranky when I'm hungry. I think we call that hangry. As she headed back to the rocky den, she saw lion, zebra, and dog, along with his rowdy pals, hanging around the water hole. A few wildebeest were there, too, for an evening drink. My, it's busy out here tonight, thought Pinduli, edging away from the others. No luck. The animals turned to see who was coming. Their jaws dropped. Their eyes bulged. Pinduli looked around wildly. What did they see? What do you think they might have seen that's making them all look like that? They look kind of scared. A ghost! The animals screamed. An evil spirit is upon! They jumped and ran. Where, where, cried Pinduli as she raced behind them. Feet pounded and dust flew and no one answered. See anyone in this picture that might look like a ghost? The terrified crowd tore through thorny brush over craggy stone and horrified, found themselves at a dead end in a small canyon. They screeched to a halt huddling closely as they turned to face their worst fear. 
dog was the first to speak. Oh, great spirit, he howled. You've come for me, I know it, because I made fun of a young hyena's ears. All eyes were on Pinduli. Ah, so I'm the ghost, she thought. I'd better get in character before they recognize me. Go on, dog, said Pinduli in a slow, deep voice. The spirits want to know why you would commit such a hideous, awful, atrocious crime. Ooh, another good word, atrocious. And think of the other words she just said, hideous, awful, atrocious crime. Well, I know hideous and awful mean terrible, bad. So atrocious, that kind of means the same thing. It's like extremely bad. Dog's voice quavered. I, I don't know. I guess I was still mad at Fennec Fox for calling me Butterfly Head. Lion joined in. Please spare us your wrath. I, too, have spread discord by insulting a young hyena's mane. But Vulture called my own mane a mange. Pinduli nodded sagely. Zebra stomped her hoof. Owl told me that my stripes were garish. A tear rolled down her long face. Garish is a really good word too. And I'll tell you what that word means. It means like they were too showy or as some of you might say extra. So they, um, it was owl and she basically was saying that zebra was extra. Everyone fell silent. Pinduli's mind whirled as she tried to think of what a ghostly spirit might say. Of course, spirits always give tasks and want offerings, she thought. Hmm, let's see. Okay. Mama will love this. In order to appease bad spirits, you must find your tormentors and make peace, Pinduli called out with authority, and always leave a bit of every meal as an offering. If you do this, I shall never return. She turned and glided away on her tiptoes, trying not to smile. Thank you, thank you, called the creatures. We will do as you say. Once out of sight, Penduli raced home. There you are, cried Mama Hyena as Penduli galloped up to her. You look awful. Penduli was so glad to be home again, it was worth getting in trouble. She didn't even mind the five baths it took to get the dirt out of her fur. In fact, it took all night to get Penduli looking like a beautiful hyena again. I was worried sick. I went looking everywhere for you, said Mama Hyena as she helped smooth Penduli's coat. Now that you're all straightened up, we've got to get out and find something to eat. It's already morning, and I'm sure you are as ravenous as I am. Pind Pinduli's stomach growled. Ooh, another good word, ravenous. And think about how we could figure out what, word, what that word means. Mama just said, we've got to get out and find something to eat. It's already morning, and I'm sure you are as ravenous as I am. And then Pinduli's stomach growled. So Mama wants to find something to eat. Penduli's stomach is growling and Mama says, ravenous. So I know when I'm hungry, my stomach growls. And when I'm really, really hungry, it's like I'm so hungry that perhaps I feel ravenous also. So ravenous means very hungry. That very morning, Dog, Lion, and Zebra searched the wide savanna until they find, found Fennec, Fox, Vulture, and Owl. We have come here on the order of the great spirit, Dog announced. We must find out why you were so rude to us. Fennec Fox spoke up. I guess I was having a bad day. Serval Cat said I looked like a little fuzzy bat without wings. He nodded to Dog. Your ears really aren't so bad. Vulture ducked his bald head. Marabou Stork called me Moonscape, so I got mad and made fun of Lion. Owl moaned. The latter said my feathery stripes look more like scribbles. Let's go find those three and get to the bottom of this, said Dog. Hmm, are you noticing a pattern here? The animals that made fun of Penduli got made fun of by those three. The oddball crowd went searching and found Serval, Marabou, and Adder. We've come here on the order of the great spirit, they declared. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble for laughing at Owl's stripes, hissed Adder. Miss Zebra, do you remember 
When I said your stripes were dull, mumbled Zebra. Marabou stepped forward on his stilt-like legs. Lion told me that the glare of the sun on my head hurt his eyes. Sorry, grumbled the big bald cat. Then Dog blurted, Oh dear, Serval, please forgive me. Serval's amber eyes squinted at Dog. You mean for the time you said that the wind might pick me up by my giant ears and blow me away, he said. Yep, Dog yipped. Who am I to be talking about ears? He pranced about, flopping his big ears like the wings of a butterfly. Serval burst out laughing, and everyone, including Dog, joined in. So it seems to me that perhaps each animal was making fun of another animal because they were feeling bad about themselves. From that day on, things began to change for Pinduli and her mother. Instead of spending hours hungrily scrounging for meager meals, they found delicious treats everywhere. Look, again, eggs, fish, fruit, it's a miracle, exclaimed Mama. As Pinduli tasted a sweet berry, she said, the great spirit must be smiling upon us. Mama Hyena looked at her grinning daughter. Wait a minute, did you have something to do with this? Laughing and feasting, Pinduli told the whole story. You're not only the most beautiful hyena ever, said Mama. You're the smartest hyena ever. So let's think quickly about what the message in this story could be. Think about how we learned at the end, each animal was insulting another animal or saying something bad about the way an animal looked because someone had said something bad about them. Right? They weren't feeling great about themselves, so they wanted to make someone else feel bad, too. Think about the message there. I think that what that's saying is you don't really, you shouldn't go around telling other people, you know, that something is bad about them, maybe the way they look or um, the way they dress, um, the way they talk even, because, you know, then that in turn makes them feel bad, but you don't then have the right to go and make someone else feel bad, right? And I think there's another message here too. Each time an animal said something to Pinduli, think about what she did, right? Was she just walking away and saying, you know, I, I like the way I am, just, just the way I was made? Or did she start to change herself, right? She popped her ears down, she got in the water to try to fix her in her mane, and then uh, when she, the zebras made fun of her, she rolled in the dust to cover up her stripes. So she was changing who she was. So I think another great message is that, you know, don't let other people make you feel bad about yourself to the point that you're gonna change who you are because you're all wonderful the way you are. And don't ever forget that. So I hope you enjoyed this story. Um, I'll try to find another one. I've got plenty with Everly's books, but I'll try to find another one to read and um, bring in some vocabulary and maybe some other concepts for you.